So you know how good text to image is, but guess what? There is a new cowboy in town and it is text to video. In the past, if you have ever thought about typing up a scenario for like a single take short, something simple, but like a photograph with motion, then you will love today's news because an artificial intelligence startup called Runway ML has released its second generation text to video model. Runway ML is a web-based video editor, but it's full of awesome artificial intelligence tools like background removal and pose detection. Now in the past, I've used what was called the generation one text to video model, and that required actual video footage to start with. It was, you know, it was fun to play with, but I never really used it for any real world purposes. Generation two, is still probably not something I'd use like day to day, but I am seeing some entertaining things coming out of it from other creators. But the cool thing about Gen 2 is it can actually generate from scratch. So you start with just the text prompt, that's all you need, all of the video is generated from that. So far the demo clips are fairly short and they're not super realistic and you have to join a waitlist to get access. So I only have a few examples that I can judge at this point, but what I've seen is actually better than anything I saw from Facebook or Google so far. I believe that generative artificial intelligence will be turning text into realistic video in less than six months. And I know that seems like an extremely short timeline from this, which is the best that is out there right now. But if you look at what happened to text to image models, here's what they looked like six months ago. And here is what they look like today. And if I'm right, and in six months there is text to video models that are that realistic, do you think the general public by then will have caught on? Or do you think they will be taken by surprise as many creators create stuff that people can't distinguish if it was faked or if it was real. Also keep in mind that that text to video example I just showed you was created by Runway ML, which is a fairly small team. They only have 45 employees. When you compare that to the thousands and thousands that Google and Microsoft have, and once they start actually training those much bigger data sets on those much bigger cloud computers, I think that a product like that is bound to pop into existence. <laughs> A new day, a new artificial intelligence text to video model has been released. And this one is open sourced. Anybody to use, you do get the commercial rights to what you generate and it's available for anyone to use on Hugging Face right now. And it's not a weak model either. This thing's really close to the cutting edge. It was trained on 1.7 billion parameters. That means it's not some rando weak gamer rig model. And even though the output is not super realistic, that's just because the technology isn't there yet. What it is producing is actually pretty close to the best that text to video can do at the moment. So the original paper that came along with this model was written in Chinese. So what I'm reporting to you is like the best of what Google Translate could do for me. But lucky for us English speakers, the actual model was trained on a corpus of text that was primarily English. So it will definitely understand how to turn the text prompt of a thirsty stormtrooper with Riz into a video. This Twitter user made a Batman movie in 30 minutes with this artificial intelligence. He called it the killing joke. So the model scope text to video isn't going to make cuts. So these would probably be individual prompts that are kind of glued together using a video editor. I mean, it's not the worst Batman video I've ever seen. And check out this Star Wars video. Look at that pure immersion without the million dollar budget. What is that, Tatooine or something? Considering it's not even a budget at all, it's just a text to prompt open source system and it's going to get much better very soon. It's interesting. And even more interesting, if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see what looks like a Shutterstock watermark. Hmm, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> Hey, did you hear about NVIDIA's new eye contact feature in their broadcast software? It uses artificial intelligence to make it look like you are making eye contact with the camera when you're really not. So to be clear, that means that if you are on a video call, you can actually make eye contact with someone no matter where you put your real eyes. It is creepy and weird and like borderline manipulative. So it's not perfect yet. And Nvidia said that they're still working on making the fake eyes completely match the person's real eyes. So 
I think that means if you have like brown eyes, you might have like blue eyes when you're staring at the screen. So if you're suspicious that you're on a call and it's like, that's not your eye color, that's probably not your eyes. And this feature is still in beta, but the NVIDIA broadcast software has some awesome artificial intelligence technology baked into it. Features like virtual green screens, noise cleanup, quality upscaling, and for those of you that are gamers who actually record your video game screens as you play them, if one of the frames is dropped, it can actually generate an entirely new frame for you for the other person to see. They're not the first company to try this fake eye contact feature. In the past, Apple's experimented with something called attention correction for FaceTime, and Microsoft has built in some similar tools into Windows 11. And this is just one of those AI use cases that I hadn't thought about until today, so maybe the future of eye contact is here. But being on a video call and having my eyes keep perfect eye contact, no matter where I look, is just kind of eerie, to tell the truth. And it might be rude, because fake eye contact is designed to make people think that you're engaged with them. You know, and if it's an avatar where the whole thing is fake, I kind of understand, but if it's all real except the eyes, there's just something about that. And even if you're in favor of it, I think if there's a group conference call and some people are using it and some people aren't, there should at least be like a little marker in the corner to know if they're like, faking attention or if they're actually paying attention. Imagine like an online teacher looking at like 32 students on the screen and every single one of them is like paying attention so perfectly. That would be so sus. You know what else is sus? Not hitting that subscribe button. Don't be sus, hit subscribe. Now, generative artificial intelligence for video is certainly a hot topic this year in 2023. And Silicon Valley investors definitely agree, at least based on how much money they're giving to startups that work in the space. Sequoia Capital, Excel Partners, and Index Ventures have all invested heavily in generative AI this year. One example being a startup named Tavis, which recently just raised $6.1 million. Based on the idea that companies are soon going to want to digitalize their customer service representatives. Now in theory, doing this definitely helps scale up the customer service experience that look and feel somewhat human, but can be customized for each individual user. Scale and personalization is the name of the game, and that is what the investors are thinking about. Tavis and companies like it are using machine learning to capture the facial gestures of the people who best represent the brands. And once they've done that, the rest of the company can access the platform through a web dashboard, or they can integrate it into their current systems via an API. Now, the thinking here is that it can be very reactive through the API. So whether that's something trending in the news or a decision that the CEO makes, all of the customer service representatives can embody that quality or that desire or that need and express that in their own way to each customer. So artificial intelligence techniques are to the point where a company can take their customer service representatives, scan them in and capture a lot of the way that their lips move and their facial gestures when they talk so that they can program them to say anything they want when they're acting as a customer service representative in a customized way. Now I could definitely see why if you're the CEO of a company that employs a lot of customer service reps, you might want to start experimenting with technology like this because you you could say, I'll keep some people here for those edge cases, they'll also help with the training data, but a lot of the questions are repetitive and why can't a computer that feels human and the customer likes it do that over and over again for us? So for me, when it comes to whether or not I'm okay with a company deploying a technology like this, really comes down to the intentions behind why it's being employed. So putting extra cost into making sure that this kind of a system doesn't risk their brand is very important. Whereas when this same technology is used more for entertainment purposes or political purposes, or even smaller startups that wanna disrupt an industry by breaking the credibility of their larger competitors, I think it's gonna be a big problem. Have you heard that quote that a lie can travel halfway around the world while the truth is still putting its shoes on? I think that's gonna be the story of reputational damage.